Welcome to the Broadway.com show filmed right in the heart of Times Square. I'm Beth Stevens. And I'm Paul Wontore. This week we head backstage at Wicked with star Jackie Burns, learn five secrets at a Bronx tale with Richard H. Blake, and more. And later we sit down with Chicago's new matron Mama Morton and Real Housewives favorite Candy Burris. But first, let's get started with the news. What's the buzz, Paul? Broadway is heading to Boston this summer, where the hotly anticipated stage adaptation of Baz Luhrmann's Moulin Rouge is set to take a bow. The Broadway-bound show will play the legendary Emerson Colonial Theatre starting on June 27th, with opening night set for July 22nd, kicking off a limited run through August 5th. The 2001 film tells the story of wide-eyed poet Christian, who falls in love with cabaret star Satine during one fateful night at the famed Paris nightclub. For a recent developmental lab, Aaron Tveit and Tony winner Karen Olivo took on the leading roles, but no casting has been announced for Boston. Here's what we can confirm, however. Alex Timbers of Here Lies Love will direct, Tony winner John Logan is writing the book, Sonia Taya is choreographing, and the show will feature songs from the film, as well as other more recent pop hits. Pack some absinthe, Beth, we're going to Boston. Can we bring absinthe on Amtrak? Yes, we can, can, can. Broadway blockbuster Wicked is welcoming two new cast members this month, Isabel Keating as Madame Morrible and Martin Moran as Dr. Dillamond. The veteran performers will join the musical on January 30th, with current stars Rondi Reed and Chad Jennings taking their final bows on January 28th. Moran says he's excited to join a musical that, quote, endures because it touches the soul, while Keating, who was nominated for a Tony Award for her moving performance as Judy Garland in 2004's The Boy from Oz and comes directly from Wicked's national tour, notes that she feels like she's coming full circle back to Oz. Get it? Got it! A Grammy-winning rocker has booked his next gig. On Broadway, Pat Monahan, the frontman of the multi-platinum selling band Train, will make his stage debut in Rocktopia from March 20th through April 8th. The brainchild of former Jekyll and Hyde star Rob Evan, Rocktopia is a new musical event that fuses 20th century rock with classical compositions, utilizing amazing singers, a badass band, and even a choir to raise the roof at the Broadway Theater this spring. You'll hear the work of Journey, Mozart, Queen, Handel, U2, Tchaikovsky, Hart, Beethoven, Led Zeppelin, The Who, and more. Monaghan promises to sing Led Zeppelin's Kashmir, as well as a special encore of a hit train song merged with some classical sounds. Rocktopia will feature a wide array of vocalists during the Broadway run, which is scheduled to go through April 29th. The longest-running American musical is returning to London in 2018, and it will star an Oscar winner to boot. Chicago is set for the West End this spring with Cuba Gooding Jr., who won an Academy Award for Jerry Maguire, taking the role of sought-after lawyer Billy Flynn. The original London production ran for 15 years, featuring such celebrities as David Hasselhoff, John Barrowman, Brooke Shields, Ashley Simpson, and more, before closing in 2012. No word yet on who will play the merry murderesses in this year's return, but you can look for murder, mayhem, and that razzle-dazzle candor and score at London London's Phoenix Theater beginning on March 26th. They could add an extra line for Billy Flynn that would totally work. What's that? Show me the money! As the theater world knows, Felicia Rashad can do it all. Although once best known as one of the greatest TV moms ever, Claire Huxtable on The Cosby Show, obviously, she's really become a true lady of the stage. She won a Tony Award for A Raisin in the Sun, opposite Brother Love, AKA P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, Sean Combs, and received a follow-up nom for an epic turn as the star of August Wilson's Chum of the Ocean. More recently, Rashad has been flexing her directorial muscles at theaters like Mark Taper Forum and Steppenwolf Theater Company. And now, she's ready to show New York her stuff. Rashad will direct the upcoming off-Broadway staging of Stephen Adley Gerges' Our Lady of 121st Street, which starts May 1st at the Pershing Square Signature Center. Casting will be announced at a future date. Here's a quick casting roundup. Molly Griggs has been tapped to replace Beanie Feldstein as Minnie Fay in the smash Tony-winning revival of Hello, Dolly. Griggs, who appeared off-Broadway in Manhattan Theatre Club last year, will make her Broadway debut opposite Bernadette Peters and Victor Garber in the leading roles on January 20th. Meanwhile, Anne McDonough is replacing the previously announced Dana Ivey in Joshua Harmon's admissions at Lincoln Center Theatre, which begins at the Mitzi Newhouse on February 15th. Ivey withdrew to necessary hip surgery, and we wish her a speedy recovery. And finally, Malik Pincholi, known for his work on 30 Rock and Weeds, as well as stage vet Marklin Baker, Kenny Melman, and more are joining the starry, previously announced cast of David Rabe's Good for Auto. The new group production, headlined by Rosie O'Donnell, Ed Harris, and F. Murray Abraham, is set to run at the Pershing Square Signature Center with previews starting on February 20th. When we come back, we take a look at Once in the Silent designer Clint Ramos's inventive costumes. Check out the Broadway-bound music extravaganza Rocktopia and more. It'll take brains. It'll take courage. It'll take heart to prove I'm not wicked. 
Hey, this is Gavin Lee, and you're watching the Broadway.com show. Welcome back. It's always a treat to get a sneak peek backstage at a Broadway theatre. We recently headed to the Gershwin, where Jackie Burns is back in the Emerald City as Elphaba. Wicked's leading lady welcomed us into her dressing room to share five of her favourite things. Take a look. Number one, look how cute this is. My first favorite thing was a gift from opening night from my Bach, Jai, and he gave me this cute little picture hanger thing with these little clothespins with different colors, and then I could put all of my pictures from fan art to our cast. This is the five of us. We went in together at rehearsal together when we all hung out for the first time. Cute. And number two is a smorgasbord of things that I use during the show. I eat these during the entire show. I have this in my mouth the entire show. Don't tell anybody. And then this is my go-to snack at intermission because you get some oil for your cords and then you get some Pedialyte, you get all your electrolytes because it's very dry out there. And also it tastes good and so do these. And feel free to send any of these for free at the Gershwin, care of me, Jackie Burns. Thank you. Number three is this beautiful dish that was gifted to me on opening night from the prior Alphaba, Jenny Genoya. I love it. It says, in the right place, and I think it's the prettiest thing ever, and I put all my jewelry in it every night. So thank you. Number four is this heater. I just got it. It's been very cold, all you New Yorkers know lately, and this dressing room was freezing. So they put this new heater in, and it is a dream come true. No longer do I get out of the shower in nine degree weather. Now it's like a tropical paradise. Thank you, Wicked. And my final favorite thing <laughs> is my green team. They make all of the magic happen here at the Gershwin. Without them, I wouldn't get on stage every night. Hair, dresser, makeup, perfection, all together. Any girl should be so lucky, or boy. <laughs> so thanks for stopping by and watching my five favorite things and come see me in Wicked at the Gershwin. I'll probably be green though. Charles Palminteri's A Bronx Tale has been an acclaimed one-man show, a hit movie, and now a full-fledged Broadway production. Fans know the story of the boy caught between the father he loves and the mob boss he'd love to be, but A Bronx Tale's Richard H. Blake recently took us behind the scenes to share five backstage secrets fans may not know about this thrilling doo -wop musical. You've never seen Belmont Avenue like this. Hi, I'm Richard H. Blake, and I play Lorenzo in A Bronx Tale the Musical, and today I'm going to share with you five secrets from our show. Come on. So here we are in the wings backstage at the theater, and uh, one of our secrets is all of the food that Jojo the Whale eats in the show is actually real. But we have had some food mishaps. Uh, Michael, you seem to be holding a slice of cheese pizza right yeah. now. That yeah. wasn't always just cheese pizza, was it? No, originally it had pepperoni on there from our choreographer's request, Sergio Trujillo. Um, but the pepperoni would occasionally fall off when I was dancing with the, uh, I danced with the slice during a number called Roll em. Cause he can't hold it back. He, when he starts to I'm move, full when out. he starts to move, he's full, triple full out. So the pepperoni was falling on the ground. Show him the move uh, that made the pepperoni fall. Well, it's a little, yeah, I'm sitting in a chair and it's a little like chug, chug, oh, chug, chug forward. Yeah. You know, uh, and so that would rattle, chug. that would rattle yeah. the pepperoni free. Uh, yeah. And that's a slipping hazard. We, have so we, we can't have that. So we There's have also some vegans in the cast and they were not happy with the non-vegan stage. That's, that's very true. We have a lot so. of vegans here. So here we are on stage at the Long Acre Theater. And one of the really cool things in our show is the cars in our show. We have two Chevy Corvairs, both of which have been torn apart and put back together. If you come around, you can see this one is a single seater. This is how we make it fit on and off stage. This particular car faces sideways, so the audience sees this side, which has wheels on it, and this side, which has no wheels. So the next Bronx Tale secret I'm gonna show you guys is actually this cool little secret Easter egg sort of thing that we have going on in the show. Our set designer, Beowulf Borat, he puts an elephant in every set that he designs, somewhere in the set, and ours happens to be in the Anello apartment. So my apartment houses this little guy. You can find one of these in every Beowulf Borat set on Broadway. Our next secret is inside Sonny's bathroom. This is at the Shea Bippy. And in one scene, Sonny keeps sending wise guys into the bathroom. He says, get in the bathroom, because they keep getting in the way of his craps game. So I'm going to show you a little secret about inside this bathroom. 
There you go. We got Jojo the whale, Eddie Mush, and Frankie Coffee Cake in here. To keep these guys from overheating, they have these little fans right here. Uh, and uh, those are in the toilet. So they are, when they get in there, they get to pull out of the toilet, keep themselves cool. Um, how you guys doing in there? Pretty All good. right, yeah, you know what? Go on to our next thing, I think, now. Whew. Boys. Hey. Another secret from a Bronx Taylor musical is 667 Belmont Avenue is Chaz Palminteri's actual address when he was a kid. So when we come out this door into the neighborhood that is the Bronx, we are actually coming out of the real life address of Chaz Palminteri. Pretty cool little fact. Which brings us to the neighborhood. And all of these signs that you see in the neighborhood, Donia's Bakery, Gino's Pastry Shop, Thank you, Jerome Raguso. Sends us all the good cannolis all the time. Mike's Deli and the Borgatti's. All of these establishments are still going in the Bronx, staples of the Bronx. You get up there, go up there, check it out. Go to any one of these places, tell them that a Bronx tale sent you. Who knows? You might get a free cannoli. That's all I'm saying. Thanks for joining me for Five Secrets from a Bronx Tale the Musical. Hope to see you soon at the Long Acre Theater. Tony-winning costume designer Clint Ramos' work in the Broadway revival of Once on this Island is nothing short of breathtaking. Inspired by devastating images of storm-ravaged Haiti, Ramos elevates everyday discarded objects into works of art. Watch as he reveals subtle details that add layers to the storytelling in this imaginative production. The arc for the gods begins with something really mundane. We have specific characters for them. So this is Alex Newell, uh, who plays Asaka, Earth Mother Goddess. It begins as really a, a tablecloth and then it evolves into this big ball skirt. And it's paired with like an ordinary jersey that her character wears from the beginning. And we also use some sort of discarded flowers for her headdress. It, it creates sort of this juxtaposition between the mundane and the divine, you know, this, the theatrical and the ordinary. This is the costume for Urzuli. Uh, played by Leia Salonga. It's made out of mosquito netting because uh, her character distributes mosquito netting to the people in the beginning. Um, and she's also a, a nurse. So the belt is made out of stethoscopes. On her head is a nest of discarded USB cables. You know, it's basically garbage that the, the hurricane has produced. And these uh, uh, light up in, um, during her number. Sort of working with that idea of uh, the discarded uh, becoming the divine, Timun really is the perfect uh, example of that as a character. You know, she is abandoned as a child and she becomes a goddess in the end. So this is made out of like these silk flowers, silk hibiscus, and it has a long red train that goes through the audience. Um, it, it's quite a sort of theatrical feat, really. Yeah. Whether it's soda cans repurposed into a demon's scales or plastic bags forming the water god's beard, Ramos's ability to turn trash into treasure reveals the gritty heart of this new production. The revival is really more like a reimagined revisal. You know, it uh, keeps the spirit of the original production, but it uh, catapults us to the present. It catapults us to what is important to us now as a world community. It makes the storytelling more immediate, I suppose, because we really reference people who are suffering right now and how through storytelling and through love we survive adversity. The Broadway-bound musical Rocktopia combines the classical compositions of greats like Beethoven and Puccini with the sounds of rock legends such as Led Zeppelin and Queen. We chatted with masterminds Rob Evan and Randall Craig Fleischer as well as the show's powerhouse vocalists to get the scoop on why this sneaky genre combo makes a perfect pair for the great white way. Rocktopia, I always laugh and I say it's a soundtrack of my life. I mean, I, I grew up, you know, thinking that I was going to be an opera singer but wanted to sing Journey and Foreigner and be in a rock band in high school. Ended up on Broadway in Les Miserables, which is where my home is, and I'm so very thrilled to be back. Rocktopia is a fusion, uh, thinking that if Beethoven or Mozart were alive today, 
they'd be our rock stars. Combining uh, Tchaikovsky and Mozart and Bach and Beethoven with uh, Hart and Journey and Foreigner and Led Zeppelin. So it's this brand new fusion that's never been done of these two worlds. You know, we wanted just to be real and we wanted it to be authentic and just really genuine. So we chose artists and vocalists and band members who are just who are well versed and just really unique in what they do. So none of our singers do what the other person does, which makes this really special. As previously announced, train frontman Pat Monahan will join the cast for the first three weeks of the run. The company told us why Monahan is a perfect fit for Rocktopia and why Rocktopia is a perfect fit for Broadway. We are so excited about Pat Monahan uh, from Train joining Rocktopia uh, on a couple levels. Of course, we're thrilled to have a star join the cast. Uh, we're thrilled to do his song Drops of Jupiter and come into our world and, and, and really relish the opportunity to have one of these mashups created for his song. I think Broadway is the perfect place for Rocktopia because, I mean, we're talking, we're in the center of the world here. And to get a chance to expose people from all over the country, all over the world, to what we do, it's a great way to sort of start this brand out of the gate. Broadway needs need a little bit more, a little bit more, more badassness on it, you know, and it gives it that. Something different, out of the box. Something new. It's a show that's full of nostalgic rock pieces as well. So you're going to come out of there like, yeah, oh my gosh, I remember that hit, you know? The classical side fused with the classical rock, it just, they do, they just speak a similar emotion and it just moves you. It's just this, this, this rhythm that happens in your body that just kind of takes over and it's just, it's powerful. So I hope people walk away with just a, a, a moved experience and maybe an education too. If you don't know classic rock, maybe you'll get to learn a few songs that you've never heard before and vice versa with the classical world. When we return, we catch up with Grammy winner and Chicago's newest matron mama Morton, Candy Burris. It'll take brains, it'll take courage, it'll take heart to prove I'm not wicked. Real Housewives of Atlanta star Candy Burris is already having a crazy busy 2018, having just wrapped up a 22 city reunion tour with her R&B group Escape, while the 10th season of Housewives currently airs on Bravo. And now the Grammy winner is starring as Countess of the Clink matron Mama Morton in Broadway's Chicago. Burris stopped by our studio to chat about leaving the Big Peach and making her Broadway debut in the Big Apple. Candy, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. <laughs> of course, I'm so excited to chat with you. You, welcome to Broadway. Thank you. Hey, tell me a little bit about what made you want to do this. What, what brought you to Broadway? Well, I have been wanting to do Broadway all my life. Since I was in high school, I always wanted to do it. Um, but, you know, I, for whatever reason, I didn't pursue it as hard as I should have, I guess. But now the opportunity has come, and I'm so excited. Yeah. Um, it, it was kind of a fluke. I had to audition for a TV musical. Okay. And um, they wanted me to sing a Broadway song. So okay. I sang the Mama Morton song right. on tape. When you're good to mama. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they sent it. Um, my agent sent it in. But then he came back and was like, you know what? I loved it so much. I sent it to the um, company, the Chicago. Oh, look at that. Yeah. And so <laughs> I was like, okay. And then they called and said they wanted to see me. So it was like, look, yes! So a surprise and everything. Yes! Nailed it right out the <laughs> gate. <laughs> And Matron Mama Morton is just one of the best characters in the show. When You're Good to Mama is one of the best songs, in my opinion, in the show. Thank you. What do you love about singing that song? I love that song. That song is like, um, for me, um, especially at the end when you get to really put your own spin mm -hmm. at the ending and give it the ah. Uh. Right. Um, <laughs> you know, but it's, it's really cool because, um, you know, you're basically giving the message of who this woman is mm -hmm. all in one song. Right. You know, and um, so we, it's just a great song, but then it tells part of the story, which is awesome. Yeah, and what is, what's your interpretation of this character? What, what have you brought from Candy into Matron Mama Morton? Well, um, overall, you know, Mama Morton is, she's, she runs the ship. Yeah. You know, yeah. she runs the ship. So Keeper of the keys. I, you know, I'm <laughs> basically, I, I try to make her strong. She's mm -hmm. strong. I want you to see that from the jump that she's strong. She runs stuff. But then I get giddy 
every time it's a mention of me being able to get paid from the girls. <laughs> of course. It's like, oh, you know, <laughs> if you want to uh, give me some of that yep. moolah. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of a fun character because it's like, yeah, she's stern, but then at the same time, you know, she's always find, finding a way to make a book, mm -hmm. you know, um, which is kind of funny. You are a an award-winning singer-songwriter, yep. and you've worked with some huge artists, TLC, Pink, yes. Mariah Carey, yes. Whitney Houston you worked yes. with. What, what is the candy touch that you bring to songwriting and to the, the songs that you make? Well, I think I am great at um, taking real life stories and making it into a song. Mm -hmm. So like a lot of the songs that I wrote in the past, I can tell you, yeah, that was about my boyfriend back in the, <laughs> right, you know, or right. either if, you know, I had a conversation with the artist and they told me something that was funny or crazy mm -hmm. that was going on. I, I'm, I'm great at taking a real life story and making it a relatable song that everybody wants to sing along with. What do you make of the songs that John Kander and Fred Ebb, Fred Ebb wrote for this show? What do you what do you think their special skill? I mean, to the point where audiences come to see this show, it's one of the biggest shows on Broadway. Oh, for sure. Um, to be running 21 years. Yeah, like, whoa. absolutely, I right? I can't believe I'm a part of this. But um, I just feel like their songs are just, um, it's just, the amazing way that they were able to really take the story and put it into the song and make it flow. Mm -hmm. Like you never feel like there's a dull moment Absolutely. in the show, right. which is great. Um, even though Mama, I mean, When You're Good to Mama is like my main song, mm -hmm. but I truly love the song Class, which oh, is the so duet good. that with I Velma. do at the end. Yeah, yeah with Velma. And um, it's something about you know, reminiscing on the way things used to be and to what's going on now. And even though, of course, the, the scene of the play is, you know, from a long time ago, mm -hmm. it still relates to what's Absolutely. going on in the real world. Absolutely. Do you like to hang, when you're not on stage, do you like to hang around and watch the show from the wings, listen to the, the other songs, or are you, are you busy back there? Um, well, even from the top of the show, like, before I come in, um, for my part, I'm automatically singing, he had it coming. <laughs> like in my mind, Absolutely. I'm like, I wish I could sing that with them because I yeah. really love that song. Yeah. Well, know? now that you're here, you'll be able to do whatever parts you like. You can play all the parts in Chicago. If in you my like. head. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. You, you've said you've been interested in musical theater since like high school. And yes. that you, you've also written a musical, A Mother's Love. Yes, right? I did. What, I know that you planned on taking that on tour at one point, but where, mm. what, what brought you to write that? And what mm. do you hope to, do you hope to write more musicals? Well, um, well, I, I would actually, um, now that you mention it, but um, with A Mother's Love, it was really inspired by my real life and what was going on at the time. Mm -hmm. A lot of people saw a lot of that stuff when my mom didn't like my, what, who is now my husband. Okay. Um, she didn't like him, she had her sisters against him, and so I kind of did like a, a my interpretation of, of that. Of what was happening. And yeah, all okay. in a musical form. So it's really cool. I'm, it's on DVD now. You mm -hmm. can get it on my website. But it, it turned out really great. And I wrote every song in the, yeah. um, in, the, in the show as well as I had somebody to help me with the actual script. Mm -hmm. But um, it turned out to be amazing. What did you enjoy most about that process of just crafting your own, your own musical? It's a huge to, undertaking. Yes. Um, I think the part to be able to take what was in my head and mm -hmm. actually see it come to life on stage. Yeah. That's, that's so an exciting. amazing feeling. For sure. You know, um, all the songs, you know, to be able to create those songs and have, you know, um, musicians come in and to, you know, bring them to life and have the uh, artist to come in and sing them. And, and then we hit the stage and everything just comes together. It's just, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. It's the 10th season of Real Housewives of Atlanta is airing right now. Yes. Some of your fellow housewives, they'll, they can say crazy things about you. And besides a Always. great clap back on Twitter, which you're excellent <laughs> at, well, how do you kind of get that stuff out of your mind and be able to pursue your dreams of being on Broadway and your restaurant and your music and all of that? You know what? Um, you just can't allow anything that anybody else is saying to, um, hinder your success because really your success is the greatest revenge mm -hmm. you know yes. <laughs> so it's like you can do all that talking but <laughs> check this out you know and that's right. kind of my way of 
just, you know, the greatest clap back. What do you hope your fans, fans of your music, mm -hmm. fans of yours from Real Housewives, why do you hope they come and see you in Chicago? And what do you hope they take away from seeing you up on Broadway stage? Well, I think the cool thing about this whole entire year up until now is I think people have really been able to, to see the other side of me, what got mm -hmm. me into the entertainment business. Yeah. Um, a lot of people who are fans of the show, they just, you know, they think, oh, housewives. But to be able to see me on stage, I think that gives them a real perspective of who I really am. Mm -hmm. It's not about the drama. It's about the music, the talent, and entertaining you for real. Not for drama, but right. really entertaining you. Right. And you're still in the process of getting bitten by that Broadway bug. Is it yes. something that you think is going to stick? Is this something you're going to want to do more often? Oh, you definitely. hang around with us for a while? Definitely. <laughs> I would love to you know, continue to do Broadway. Yeah, well make sure you go see some shows and see what else you'd like to do, because we'd love to keep you around. Well, thank so you. Thank you, uh, thank you so much. Make sure you go see Candy Burris in Chicago at the Ambassador Theater through March 11th. You're gonna love it. Thank you again so much for coming by. It's such Thanks. a pleasure having you. When we come back, we watch Rocktopia's Tony Vincent lend his powerful pipes to Elton John's Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me. It'll take brains, it'll take courage, it'll take heart to prove I'm not wicked. Hi, I'm Laura Dreyfus and you're watching the Broadway.com show. Thank you for watching the Broadway.com show. We leave you with Tony Vincent's epic performance of Elton John's Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me from Rocktopia. See you next week.